the long-awaited discus guide. People have been asking me to share my opinions on how to keep discus, and I'm going to do that, but just know whatever I say will start a controversy because I don't adhere to the strict standards of how the elitist discus keepers keep discus. I'm coming at it from an approach of I've kept discus personally, I've helped a lot of people keep discus, and I've kept them in the store, and I've seen a lot. I've dealt with wilds, I've dealt with you know, man-made strains and all that. So this is a culmination of all my experience. So first and foremost, I think the easiest tip is to keep them hot. Whether they're wild caught or not, I'd rather have them hot than too cold. And for discus, for me, that's 85 to 86 degrees. Anything less than that over the course of, if I was to, you know, survey and keep a thousand discus, I think 60 to 70% would not do well under 85 degrees. And so the first step, my recommendation is keep them very hot. Keep them active, keep some metab metabolism going well, and in general they show better color. And the reason why we do this a lot of times is the countries that are coming from, Malaysia and even Germany, they're already keeping them very hot. And so if they've been raised their entire life cycle very warm, and then we get them and we try to cool them down, that's the first thing we're doing to give them discomfort. So we try to eliminate discomfort because discus are known to be a little bit finicky and I'm not so sure that they're finicky so much it is humans are finicky and we're not willing to adapt to what the fish want. We're a kind of fish keepers and we go, ah, you put fish in an aquarium, they live. Well, this is a fish that doesn't thrive unless we make adjustments to how we keep fish. And the first one would be temperature. The next one is tank mates. Not everything wants to be that hot, and discus in general are a slow feeder. Like they're not really built to be bullet shaped and move quickly and eat. So when we we put them in the same race against other fish that are built that way for food, they lose out. So we don't want to put them with like barbs and too many tetras and all this kind of stuff where they're going to get out competed. So they typically eat mouth food and then they'll kind of spit it out and they have to chew it because their mouths aren't that big and we typically feed them too big of food as humans. And so almost anything else, clown loaches, all the stuff that loves heat will also compete. That's why we don't really mix rams and angelfish and all these other things. So when it comes to tank mates, things like cardinal tetras are a staple, um, stir by corridoras, but I would say less is more like start with a hardcore discus tank then add some things you might think work out well. Like, oh, maybe I'll add a bristle nose, maybe I'll add this, but they need to be the centerpiece. And when it comes to food, my tip is smaller the better. Like frozen bloodworms are great and they love them, but they get addicted to them very easy. And so like their mouth shape doesn't open that wide and a bloodworm has a lot of nutrients and is very tasty and it's in like a, you know, a burrito shape. It's a lot easier for them to eat than trying to eat like a burrito that's this way where they like have to take a bite out of it. They're not really made to do that. So bloodworms work good. I found that uh, ours like the vibrabites. I found that they like, um, I don't have it in front of me, but the uh, Sarah discus granules, also granules uh, made by Tetra and the ones made by Hikari, which is the bio granules. All of those work pretty well. Um, varying up the frozen foods or even live foods like, but the delivery methods, what's important is that they're picky and they're shy and we're really good at stressing them out. So get a wide variety of food going, keep them hot. Now, when it comes to pH, there are diehard people here. My experience has been if we're somewhere between six, eight and seven, six, for the most part, they do just great. I haven't noticed myself, and that's me keeping wild caught discus. I've kept captive raised. I've not kept um, like um, German raised discus, Stenkar discus, where they're known to tolerate higher pHs. But in general, if you keep them hot and you keep the stress level down, they just thrive. And that's one of the hardest things. Now, when it comes to what size tank, I personally think the minimum should be a 75 gallon. You can do a 55, but more slave to the water changes, I guess, because the fish get big if you do it right. You know, they're like saucer plate size if we're doing it right. Not that we all have to get them that big. Maybe we only got ours this big. That's fine. Um, but because we're having to feed them a lot and they're really hot, by keeping them hot, we got to feed them a lot. So that's what leads to the extra water changes for most people. Um, the 75 gallon, I like to put at least six in there. If you don't put a group together, 
they end up bullying each other typically. So one, you could keep one technically, and I know I set the internet on fire whenever I recommend a schooling fish could be kept as a singleton. In my experience, they still thrive and many customers have them thrive. You know, whether a dog is supposed to be in a pack or we can keep just one, like, well, most of us can keep just one, even though they're a pack animal, right? You know, same thing with the discus, but I digress. Um, so I like six or more. And if I was really being serious about it and I was going to do a 75 gallon tank, I'd buy 10 to 12 discus knowing that as they grow up and I get some rowdy males in there, I would give them back to the store and I would end up with a group that's female heavy and then a few males like two. And then I'd have a nice group that's not just at each other's throat the whole time. They are territorial. They are a cichlid. And, uh, so we, they need some territory. They can do planted tanks, but you got to find plants that are going to tolerate the temperatures, Anubias, Java ferns, Bacopa, sword plants, micro swords, all that stuff tends to do okay in there. And, uh, you know, I, I like to add an air stone in there just because we're raising the temperature and that type of stuff. We're already keeping it 85 or 86 in the dead of summer when our tanks typically raise up a little bit more. We can get to a point where we're running a little bit low on oxygen and a, an air stone kind of takes care of all that. As far as hardness and that kind of stuff, when it, it basically water parameters for discus really matter when you're trying to breed them and raise fry, not so much if you're just trying to keep them and enjoy them. So breeding them, that's kind of almost a whole different video, but you know, much lower pHs, lower hardnesses, whereas just keeping them, any hardness that's kind of medium hard and softer will work. If you go to some of those uh, German bread discus, they can go even harder than that. But for me, the big key is reducing stress. So let's feed them correctly. Let's keep them warm. Let's keep water parameters. Let's keep it clean and within range and not just moving around a whole bunch. Let's make sure we don't have kids like tapping on the tank or it's right next to a big loud TV that's creating shadows and light strobes all the time. Limiting the traffic. There's a bunch of things we can do to make them feel safe in this aquarium. And when you put a fish that gets this big, in a four foot tank that's only 18 inches, it doesn't feel that safe because it can't move a whole lot. Like it, there's no way it's like, when it gets spooked, it can't just run down the street. It can just move a little bit and goes, oh, I hope that I'm not getting hurt, you know? So those are my tips. Bigger is better on tank size. The more you start with and cull down or, or you know, select down to a group of few males and a bunch of females, really good food, keep them warm. When it comes to buying from local breeder, sure, buy from local store, buy anywhere you want. You know, I would say if you've never kept discus, don't necessarily buy the cheapest discus, but also don't buy, you know, $300 each adult discus because you don't know how to keep them yet. I would buy a group all at once. That's my last tip is go get six or 10 or 12 instead of, well, I'll buy one this week. I'll buy one in two weeks. I'll buy one on the next paycheck. And then you've got all these different sizes and it's really easy for them to outcompete each other. That's one of the most common things you'll see is I have a group of discus. All of them are doing well, except one's not. He's lost all its color and he's kind of the runt now and he's not getting enough food because they don't compete very well and he gets dominated every time he comes out to eat and eventually you end up losing him. So a, a fish like that that's losing, get in a quarantine tank. Don't make it compete against any other fish to eat. Just give it food, get it really back up and healthy and then if they haven't done that to another fish, go buy like two or three more discus and add three or four more all back in at the same time. And you're much more likely to get the whole group thriving instead of just reintroducing that one and having it have the same problem again. So good luck. I realize internet's on fire that I've given my advice as opposed to the standard 100% water change every day, only feed the top quality foods, only do this, only buy from you know the top end breeders, only do those things. But the reality is there's a group of people doing that. And then there's the entire rest of the world that goes, well, I just won't tell people what I'm doing. And that's who I'm trying to help is that those people that are so put off by this group and are already having some success over here. These are just my tips on what I had success with in the store and at home and all that kind of stuff. So good luck and enjoy them. That's the biggest thing I can say is if you are enjoying those fish, you're doing discus correctly. A lot of people are so worried they're going to kill them and they spend so much time worrying, they don't actually enjoy the fish. It's two years of, oh, it was so stressful. Instead, just enjoy their beauty and enjoy them for however long you have them and move on when you're bored. If you're bored, give them to a pet store, go buy something else. I always have that tip in fish keeping. Keep what you love. Good luck.